Yeah. So how was it handled? How did your mom handle it? Okay, none of them like it because like none, my whole family, I was the only one that went to church. Nobody wanted, nobody liked it, but me, I grew up like I'm going to do like what I want to do and what makes me happy. Like, and like I told my dad, like, you're not going to tell me how to dress. You're not going to make me do what I want, what you want me to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. So my mom is here to testify to that. Like, I do what I want to do. So I've been to church. I've been, I was part of Winners Chapel Freetown, Sierra Leone. So I'm a Muslim. Yes, my name is a Muslim, but I've been there. I've been Your to church. Your name is not a Muslim yes. name. Yes, I'm a Fulani. Are you, wait, come, the Sierra Leonean Fula and the Nigerian Fulani is, the, what language do you speak? We don't speak the same way. We speak with the Guinea Fula the same way, but um, the Nigeria Fula, we don't speak the same language. So you are Fulani? Yes, but we don't speak the same language. But do you understand when a Nigerian, do you speak Fufuldi? That's what it's called. No. So if a Nigerian Fulani is speaking, do you understand? No. Okay. Do you know how to milk a cow? Do you know how to do all those things? No, I did not do that. But like, but, I, uh, but I, like my, uh, maybe my generation did that, but for us, we did not do it. So, yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Now, as a Fula, if you were living in Sierra alone, would it be okay for you to have a child out of wedlock? I did, but it was not okay. But for me, I did. Yes. So you had a child before you got married? Yes. But it was not okay by my people. But for me, it was okay for me. But everybody disowned me. And like, yes, nobody was talking to me. But like, I have to do what I have to do. But later on, everybody come back and like, we we're fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, you see, I, I want to talk about two perspectives. I want to talk about the Nigerian perspective, uh, the religious perspective, and even a third perspective, a feminist modern perspective. You see, it is frowned upon for a woman to have children out of wedlock, for anyone to have children out of wedlock, male mm -hmm. or female. It is frowned at in Nigeria. Yeah. And also, Christianity and Islam don't encourage it. Um, yeah. Apparently, if a betrothed woman, anyway, let, let, Mary was supposedly betrothed, and when she got um, pregnant, uh, or when Joseph found out she was pregnant, he was afraid of handing her over to the people because they were going to stone her, literally. It didn't say women did not get pregnant out of wedlock, but there was a story uh, about a woman who was pregnant and, they, and she was supposed to be stoned um, uh, uh, in, in the scriptures. And apparently, I, I don't want to go into it anyway, but I'm just trying to emphasize on it. Then, in today's world, now you see those days, you needed to be married. These days, you don't need to be married. You see, those days, life was determined according to physical strength. More of physical strength than mental strength. For instance, sorry, I want to sneeze. For instance, um, a man who can work hard would be able to feed a larger family. I don't know if I'm making sense. Yeah. A hardworking man would be able to feed a larger family. So your wife, your, your daughter will be more secure with a man who can actually work hard. By work hard, you pull one car with one hand, be planting corn with another hand. 
the more I, I, I experienced it in Romania, um, where I stayed with my uncle on his farm. I was considered the laziest human being alive because I struggled with basic tasks. My uncle wake up in the morning, would go and feed cow, clean cow, do this. It was a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So those days, you can imagine now 2,000 years ago. In fact, 2,500 years ago, life was determined by how strong you were. And women are not strong enough to survive on their own. It wasn't easy. So you needed a male um, covering. So you're either with your father or you're with your husband. If you are alone, it wasn't so easy. Now, in today's world, a woman doesn't really need a man. Yes. She doesn't really need a man. That, I'm uh, for like seven years, I'm living alone. Like, I think I'm okay. In 2022, yeah. it makes sense for a woman to have a man, but it's no longer a necessity. A woman can do things by herself. And it now begs the question, you are 35 years old. There's no husband in sight. In fact, nobody is proposing. Should you be condemned to a life of loneliness? No. Let's, uh, Vidoma is saying women need men. Let's hear her perspective. So I'm trying to bring Vidoma up. Vidoma. Ah, oh right. How far? Fine, sir. Good evening. I'll be good morning. What do you think? Okay. I'm going to speak in two different dimensions. I'm going to speak um, as, a, as an evil girl and I'm going to speak as a Christian. First of all, I'll start with the, from the cultural aspect of it. In Africa here, in Igbo, to be specific, we condemn that because they, they, they see it as an abomination for a child, a female child, to give birth to a child while he, you're still um, under the protection of your parents. You know, they are looking after you. And that is because your parents are still taking responsibility. If I have to interpret that, that is why I feel the Igbo culture feels that it is totally wrong for a female child to bet another child while still living under the roof of her parents. Do you get mm. that part? I get yes. that part. So, so, in the religious aspect of it, if I have to say it, yeah, the first, I'll be honest with you, like, I don't think religion should be a yardstick to condemnation, you know? A child is a blessing from God, and to begin with, who wedded Adam and Eve? We didn't read that part in the scripture. We just know that God shall brought, um, he brought out one rib from Adam and created Eve, and they started um, whatever, whatever, and everything. But as a real Christian, well, if I don't have to be hypocritical with this, I will ask if we can have sex out of wedlock. Then what's the difference between having sex out of wedlock and making babies out of wedlock? It's basically the same thing. You get it? It's mm. As long as when I will condemn it is this, when you are not in the right position to look after those babies, that's when it is wrong for you to pay the child. Because one of the one of the world problem is is population. And to start with, you're married and you're betting kids. You can't even take care of them properly. It's the same thing as having kids out of wedlock. Like there's nothing I don't see. You shouldn't even have the baby. So. Having kids when you know you can't take care, proper care of it and having kids out of wedlock, to me as an African, I think it's only when you're not financially, mentally, spiritually, and otherwise ready to, to look after a baby. That's when I'll condemn you to have a baby. But as long as you're capable of taking care of that baby, then nothing is wrong with it. A baby is a baby, and that's it. 
Mm, 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 mm. Awesome, awesome stuff. I wish there was someone who wanted to contribute from TikTok. Uh, guys, what is your take? Um, we're talking right now about um, children born out of wedlock. The um, the right there's a huge rise in this particular trend. And someone is saying here it's a sin. What? What? Why is it a sin to have a baby out of wedlock? Why? Okay, let me answer that person that says it's a sin. Let me answer that person. Don't worry, I will answer the person. Okay. Um, what aspect are you standing to condemn someone to tell the person is sinning? Like, what's the difference between you and the person that is giving birth to a child and you that is using condom to have sex? What's the difference? No. Why do people like to be hy hypocritical about their lifestyle? We we really need to start owning raise the point. Um, mm -hmm. and that is a very that's a that's a, a huge point. You're doing the same thing. It's just that one person's own is resulting in pregnancy. Your own is not. And the person... Exactly. I do, now, you see, let me tell you. The sin is when two people who are not in a... You see, it's hard to define. And I'm going to break this down to you. I find it hard to use the Bible to condemn two grown-ups who are in a mutual exclusive relationship like Nene and I were dating, we're together but we're not formally married but we're together and we're exclusive, right? Nene is not sleeping with five other people. I'm not sleeping with seven other people. We are in this relationship together. I find it hard to condemn it, especially in today's world. I, um, I did a lot of research about the Jewish culture and the Jewish life, uh, the Jewish lives. There are many things that the Bible did not account for. We have concubinage. It was normal for a man to have a concubine. A concubine was not a proper wife. A concubine was like a lesser wife. For instance, now I'm married, but I have a lot of money and uh, I decide to take care of Nene and her children. You understand? Of course, it involves me. Her mother needs uh, money for hospital. I give her. Uh, Nene needs a new car. I buy it. Um, she needs uh, money for food. I give her. And of course, that also means we're going to be intimate. There were many examples of these concubinage relationships throughout Scripture, especially in the Old Testament. We had the examples of David, who left 10 of his concubines. We're not talking of his wives. He had wives, but he still had concubines. Same thing with Abraham. Abraham still had concubines. Uh, Solomon had, I think, 300 concubines or 700 concubines. Together, his wives and concubines were a 1,000. So what am I trying to say? All that has disappeared. And it was never considered sin. It was never considered immorality for a man yeah. to have a concubine. Paul tried to streamline Christianity and say, yes, a man must have one wife uh, and a woman must have one husband. And I understand where he's coming from because it would have been chaotic. It would have been okay in the Old Testament when men were superior to women. We can't lie about the fact that the Old Testament is a rather sexist book. And even during the time of Christ, let's remember in Matthew 14 and 15, when he fed um, the 5,000 and the 4,000. Today, we hear that he fed 5,000. It was probably 40,000 or 30,000 because women and children were not counted. Yes. So what am I trying to say? In essence, um, we can't super... Paul probably saw the fact that hey, if we tell them that... because. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, for instance, uh, there's no more male or female, uh, Jew or Gentile, we're all one in Christ. Imagine there's no more male or female. We are all one in Christ. And I decide to have three concubines. And my wife also decides to have two and a half concubines. 
is going to be all chaotic. Under the Old Testament, it made sense because the man could have concubines, the woman could not have concubines. But now, if we're all equal and we're gravitating towards this equality, how can I have concubines and, and my wife cannot have concubines? So Paul now said, okay, you know what? Each man must have a wife and each woman must have a husband. It makes sense. But in situations where some people have chosen not to marry, but they stick with the same partner, yeah. They're with the same partner, like Oprah and Stedman. Yeah. They have decided that, you know what, we're not going to get married, but we're together. We're excluded. Would you say if Oprah and Stedman are doing it, it is now simple? Because they don't have a paper. Do you think paper. God has your heart or he looks at that paper? That's the question I need to ask you. Do you think that paper is what God looks at? <laughs> well, you Is know, the Bible tell us, I think. Me, I want to know that because, like, I think we spend more, more, more time on judging people than thinking about the positive things. That's the problem. Like, yeah. as we talk about, as we talk this, about judgmental people, are two people, people too much. they are together. They're, you think Oprah's parents do not know that she's with Steadman? <laughs> you think Stedman's parents do not know that she's with her? So is it until she wears wedding dress and gathers mumu people and feeds them and only then is, the, is, is she married? Let me tell you, have you heard of what is called a common law marriage? I think I've heard about it. Google yeah. it. Some states in America, if you've lived with somebody for two years, you are considered married. Mm -hmm. I think Whether in my country we have that too. Where? In my country, I think they have that. Like, if you have stayed with this person for five years, you are considered like. You are considered. Any... Yeah. You have spousal privileges in Texas. Yeah. Somebody just mentioned it. Yeah. So, and a lot of people are gravitating towards this. Just watch over the next ten years. This is going to become more and more commonplace, more and more, because some people just don't want to go through the formality of a marriage. Maybe they yeah. saw their parents suffer in a marriage. Daddy Freeze. Yes. Daddy Freeze. Sorry, I don't know. Um, I think I should bring this to your notice. Like, I don't know if you listen to this guy, um, Guru, the great pathfinder on YouTube. Most times he talks about spirituality and some certain yeah, things uh, that I. Uh, guru, I catch him from there once in a while, and he makes yes. sense. <laughs> Yes, like there are most of his most of his topics he discuss basically about this um whole um marital and sexual affairs that people do share in common. Like, do you believe? Do you? I don't know if you want to believe or do. You, should I ask? Do you agree that when two people are basically having sex together, like they are spiritually entangled? Like, do you believe that? <sighs> To be very honest, there's a possibility of spiritual entanglement and there's also a possibility that there's no spiritual entanglement. I find it hard to give black or white answers to questions like that. Because life is not black and white. It's not yes or no. It's not black or white. There are many shades of gray in between. Between black and white, there are like 500 shades of gray. The black keeps getting lighter, 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 lighter until it gets to white. And the white keeps getting darker and darker and darker until it gets to black. So the problem is, it's called, it's in psychology, it's actually called black and white thinking. And religion is very good at making black people think in black and white. It's either yes or no. Is it a sin or is not a sin? And, and you sit down and you wonder, a woman in marriage who is sleeping around, and a man, let me give you two examples. Um, let's say Simply Vic and Vidoma are in a relationship. They are married, right? Simply Vic is cheating, Vidoma is cheating, but they're married, right? Me and Nene are not married. We live together. We are mutual. 
I don't go outside with anybody else. She doesn't go outside with anybody else. We're together. We have a commitment. We're not married. Yeah. Which one of us is sinning? Basically, we that are married, that are still sleeping around. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. yeah. So the sin, the sin there is the fact that, you see, we have to define, the sin is sexual immorality. If you are in a marriage and you are sleeping with, typically, no, the sex is not both. You can't say both. No. I do not believe that two people no. in an exclusive relationship that are not married are sinning. There's no biblical grounds for that. There's none. It becomes a sin when you can use the word sexual immorality. It's a Greek word called word called pornia that's the word paul used and that's what uh, king james translated to fornication and the word fornication and pornia both mean prostitution so if a man has a wife or a con for instance now imagine let's use the bible to settle it now imagine nene and i were in a relationship and uh Nene and I are doing it, but we're not married. Automatically, by, by the virtue of being a man, Nene becomes my concubine. Yeah. Right? She becomes my concubine. And it's not a sin to have a concubine. There's nowhere in scripture, nowhere. I, I, I put it to you today to point out to me where having a concubine was considered a sin, even in the, Old, even in the New Testament. There's no way we're having a concubine was considered sinful. It's not. Nowhere. It's only in Africa that we consider. It's only in Nigeria. Now, um, Olamba says, explain what adultery is and what fornication is. Only thing is, there's no such thing as fornication. It does not exist. You only find the word fornication in the King James Bible. You see, fornic you see, King James and not just King James, the English Bibles, the Bishop's Bible, the Geneva Bible, uh, the um, William Tyndale uh, Bible, all relied heavily on the Latin Bible. That is why the word Lucifer, you only see it in King James Bible. The word fornication, you only see it in the, um, the King James Bible. Open Matthew chapter 19, verse 9. Open Matthew chapter 19, verse 9. Let's do it together. You see, you find that word fornication only in the King James Bible. I want to open this for you. Matthew 19, that's uh, where Christ used the word the Greek word, or what was translated to the Greek word, pornia. Okay? Um, I'm looking at all of them. They all use sexual immorality. Uh, King James uses fornication. Even the new King James does not use the word fornication. No other Bible uses the word fornication. No other. I'm looking. I'm looking at contemporary Aramaic Bible, American Standard, Holman, uh, Christian Standard, Amplified Bible, uh, King James, New Living Translation, New International Version. No other biblical translation uses the word uh, fornication. Now, let me explain the word fornication to you. The word fornication. You see, when they were translating the King James Bible, or let me not put this blame solely on the King James Bible. When they were translating the English Bibles, the Geneva Bible, the Bishop's Bible, William Tyndale's, Tyndale's Bible, these were the Bibles that were before King James, and King James relied heavily on them. And they relied heavily on um, Latin. Now, when they were translating them, they leaned on the Latin Bible. Now, let's remember that the Latin Bible was available from the year 405. And the first English Bible was translated about 1,100 years later. 
This English Bible that people think is the King James Bible is a new Bible. Though. Although yeah, yeah, who are you think is old? Old? No, he's only four hundred years old. It's relatively new. Now there were not many English words back then. When the first King James Bible was translated, there was no J in English. Christ's name was Jesus. The Y in front of was like Y A Y. Yeah, that was the that was yes from Latin. There was no J in English. When go and look for a copy of the 1611 King James translation. So there were words that if you read, there are some people that blame King James for some translations, like King James translated um uh unicorn. He used the word unicorn. Meanwhile, the Bible was talking about a wild ox. Now, why did this happen? There were very few words in the English vocabulary. There were things that did not have explanation. So they just took the best way they could understand it and they used the word. My problem with King James is not that there is a unicorn in the Bible. I understand his limitations. There were not many words. My problem is when they took a word like Lucifer that was mentioned four times in the Latin Bible from the Latin Bible and used it in only one of the instances where it was mentioned and makes it look like it was the devil's name. Meanwhile, Lucifer was used four times in the Latin Bible, including 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, where Peter called Christ Lucifer. It's there in the Latin Bible. Get a copy of it. I studied, I studied scripture in Latin, in Greek. I, I studied under Aramaic and Hebrew scholars. So I know what I'm telling you. So going back to, uh, to this, the word fornication was taken from uh, the Greek word pornia. Now we need to understand that the New Testament was first written in Greek. So the original word used here in um, Matthew chapter 19, verse 9, if you read it in Greek, it says... May epipornia, except for sexual immorality. Now, the word pornia in Greek actually means prostitute. The words that have near meanings and far meanings. The word pornia means prostitution. But on prostitution, you can put things like sexual immorality. Because if you look at the way Paul used the word pornia, it covered a wider range of sins, of, or should I say sexual sins, as against just prostitution. When King James was translating the Bible, they used the word fornication. Now, fornication came from the Latin word fornix. Fornix is where the ark built art prostitutes those days used to stay and hey, hey bros where they used to solid their customers so the word was coined the word fornication was coined to interpret the word poor now like i said king james is, an, is the one of the oldest english translations and one of the least accurate Many people think that because it is older, it is more accurate. It is actually one of the worst Bibles. If you study Christianity using King James, you will miss your road. Is the... So the newer Bibles coming up now, after more research and after seeing more manuscripts, now realize, oh, come on. It, this word for nation does not really fit in this line. So they change what it really is sexual immorality and i want to ask you the two of you listening to me define fornication from Pastor, your understanding daddy please let me ask one question i have to leave i have a visitor what make it spiritual and non-spiritual i'll be on the comments i'll be watching i have okay. a visit okay. what let make it what makes it make spiritual and non spiritual i'll answer it when i'm done with this nene okay. take care thank you okay so I want to use Vidoma, who's right here with me. What do you understand by what's the difference between adultery and fornication? Well, should I answer it in my own ideology or I should answer it the way the, the, in it's your been defined? Bring else. I want to bring 
uh, as many people as possible to answer the question, what's the difference between fornication and adultery? Send me a request if you want to explain uh, this to me. So Ladara, uh, we've got Ladara. Yeah, good evening. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. And we also have the lady in red. Yeah, good evening, sir. Good evening. Okay, can we see the other lady? There's one more lady. Is Adara? No, not Adara. There's another lady. Lady. Uh -huh. All right. Hi. So I want to ask you guys, what do you understand by? Okay. Someone said, what about TikTok? Uh, Malaika Ungosu, please send a request. You want to come in? I want to bring somebody in from TikTok too. Uh, so if you're interested in this topic, oh, my problem with TikTok people is they'll come and they want to make fun of people to have fun, but also <laughs> let us. We're having a, a just discussion. So mm. TikTok people to up on. Okay. Okay. That is great. Wait, Daddy wait, wait. I want to bring in somebody from TikTok too. Um, okay, I'm waiting for it. TikTok guys. You want to be in the video? Just send me a request. So I'm asking the, what, three of you here that are already here. While we wait for TikTok people, what do you understand by fornication and what do you understand by adultery? In your own words, from what you were taught in church, explain to me. Um, if I have to be sincere with this, I will say this. If two people choose to come together as one, then there should be that commitment. There shouldn't be Don't betrayal. Answer that. I just want you, the word fornication and the word adultery, as you were raised in church, what does it mean? Just de define fornication and okay. adultery. Okay. Fornication in and if you want to go first, who wants to go first? Okay, the lady uh waving her hand, go first. Okay, okay, my name is Sumbo. Okay, Sumbo. Um I want to go by what they taught us in church. Good. In church they say fornication is when you have um something outside your matrimonial home. Fornication is when you. Fornication what? is when you. No, oh, sorry, sorry. Right. Fornication is when when you when you have anything sexual with the opposite sex outside marriage. So what is now? Whether you're single and outside marriage. That was what we we're taught in church. Okay. And then adultery is when you're married, and then you're having aff um, affairs outside your own. Your partner is cheating. You're cheating. And you're both married. That's adultery. Okay. Okay. Who else yes. wants to answer? Yeah, it's just, um, I would say it's a similar answer to what um, this um, sister just explained. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, Vidoma, what is your take? It's actually what we are taught in church now. What were you she said? <laughs> We are, taught, we are taught that adultery, adultery is when you're My having a marital affairs. Outside. Exactly. Then um, fornication is when you're having sexual affairs with someone, like premarital sex yeah. and extramarital yes, exactly, sex. Yeah. Yeah, yes, that's fornication true. is defined as premarital. Premarital. What mm -hmm. adultery is defined as Extra marital. Yes. 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 Sir. Your Bible. Can you all go and get your Bibles? Please let me pass my Bible. Hold oh, on. Oh. Let me get. Oh. Please get it. Okay. So do do do. Okay. I prefer using my phone for my Bible, but okay. Let me use this. I have my Bible. Okay. Okay. Exit. I can hear your voice, but I yeah. can't see your picture. 
I don't know why I can't see your picture on TikTok. Okay. I don't know. Come with the uh, network issue. Okay. I don't know if Indianapolis here. All right. Exist, All right. So, Shagzi, we have someone on TikTok too. Shagzi, please, what is your on adultery? My understanding, my understanding of fornication, people not come for some um, um, sex out of wedlock. Okay. Outside wedlock, you are not married. This is common among the youth when you are not married and you are indulging in sexual. While adultery is, is extramarital. Okay, while adultery is extramarital, Abby. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, okay. Do you guys all have your Bible here? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you open Matthew chapter nineteen, verse nine? I want you to read Matthew nineteen because it only came back to one communication. So I will read in the King James Bible. Okay, I'm there. Matthew what? I'm Matthew chapter I'm nine. In James Bible. Can I read it? Matthew what? Sir? Sorry. Matthew chapter nineteen verse nine. You are all going to read it. Mm -hmm. So who wants to? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who okay. okay. wants to? Read. Read. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I said, whoever divorces wife, except for no James. Um, to read King James. King James, King James. Yes. My because, is King James. Oh, King. That's not King James. Yeah, that, uh, my Bible is. No. King James. Uh, not New King James. Okay, can I read? Can I read mine? We have a lady. Here. Your name, please. Okay. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife. Except it be for fornication, shall marry another, committed adultery, and whosoever marry, marry, marrieth her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. Good. Read the beginning part again. It says, And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. How can your wife fornicate? According to Hebrews' definition, can only happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, read it. Oh my God! You all defined it. All four of you, the gentleman said, "Talk," and the and the two ladies here. You all said, "Fornication is premarital. Uh, adultery is extramarital." Abby, but yeah. you know? that somebody's wife committed fornication. <laughs> you know, how can a married woman, should she not be committing adultery? Exactly. Yeah. Well, the mm -hmm. problem is with the definition of the word. You see, you need to understand that this Bible was not written in English. And no. James was the one mm -hmm. who that word fornication. And he, in, uh, had, he introduced it in error. The real word is sexual immorality. That the only reason why you can put your wife away is not fornication, it's sexual. Mm -hmm. It was King James and translated fornication. Now, sexual immorality in all aspects of the Bible, there is nowhere where two mutually, two people in a mutual relationship are considered immoral. A man who has a concubine is not married to her, but she's a, he's a, she's a woman he's taken care of. Concubining was actually considered a lesser wife. There was no way where it was called sexual immorality. There's no way where it was said that ah, mm -hmm. he, although had concubines, what he did then was now considered sexual immorality. Yes. We need to be very mm -hmm. true. The labels, our, our parents did not get it. Because from what you've read now, is it's not really premarital. It, it just Christ himself just said a married woman can commit fornication. <laughs> it, you read it. You want to? Do you want to? I read it? Know. 
and, and, and that is free there from from this chapter we read eh? if king solomon having concubines was not considered as sexual immorality then why should why should a man divorce his his why should a man divorce his wife when she commits adultery now you see you need to understand the society upon which the bible was being it was a male okay. women were not allowed to have concubines they were allowed to no. have concubines as a woman okay. you can be a concubine but you cannot have a concubine you understand men could yes. have lesser wives women could not have lesser husbands <laughs> now the grounds in Matthew chapter 19 for understanding. Christ gave a grounds for divorce. He said, you cannot put your wife away unless she has committed immorality. You understand? Then, mm -hmm. the biblical grounds to put her away. If you read Matthew chapter 19 from verse 1 and understand the context in which Christ was talking, he was referring to uh, the scribes and the Pharisees who asked him a question saying, Moses allowed us to divorce for just any reason. What is your opinion? Okay. And Moses allowed the divorce for just any reason in Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1 to 3. Moses literally said, a, woman is, a man is tired of his wife. He should write a bit of divorcement and the woman can go and marry anybody she wants to marry. Christ now, mm -hmm. the only instance through which you can let a woman go is sexual immorality. And if you understand it according to the uh, customs then and uh, to if you if you had the opportunity to study the antiquities of the Jews you realize that many men were divorcing their wives but not divorcing them properly so the women were still legally married to them but were married to other people so they were, yeah. let me explain this to you the man would not want you know men could be wicked okay I don't like Vidoma anymore but you know what I'm not going to let her go. I'll just drive her out of my house. You've driven her out sure. of her. You have not given her a proper bill of divorcement. Mm -hmm. so she's still tied to you. She now goes to my sure. else. It is now considered adult. So Christ stepping in then was trying to address the abuse that had come to the law. So he now said, look, first of all, you can't just divorce your wife because she now has pimples and she did not have pimples when you married her. That's nonsense. You cannot divorce your wife because she has had weight. You cannot divorce mm -hmm. your wife because her hair has turned gray. You cannot divorce your wife because she now has stretch marks. You cannot divorce your wife for any of those reasons. The only reason with which you can divorce her, so you can divorce her properly, is if she was involved in immorality. Only then can she remarry and can you remarry? Christ never, if you read Deuteronomy 24, verse 1 to 3, Christ, Moses clearly said you can marry. And Christ was addressing uh, Deuteronomy chapter 24 because they said, Why did Moses tell us in the law? Where did Moses say it in the law? You have to go and read it in the law. You see, my problem with Nigerian Christians is they are ignorant. They don't like to read, they don't like. Study, they think that you, by reading one line in the Bible here, you can create a doctrine out of it. All you end up doing mm -hmm. is God stupidity. You do something stupid and you God has approved it. That's true. Do you understand? So there's nowhere in scripture where a woman cannot remarry or a man cannot remarry. No. You can very easily remarry. However, the ground for your divorce should be immorality. But you see, the but, but our society but our society has made it look like um i want to try and go back to the issue of when women have children and then they are they are, they are raising their children themselves our society failed to see that a lot of women raise their children properly even with their money better than when the man and the woman are together i've seen children that their parents live together and they turn out to be something else. And I've seen children a woman has raised with her money. The man is there, he's not doing anything. And then the children turn out to come well. But our society, especially the women in our society, they are very fast at pointing fingers at the woman and then condemning 
the woman. It's so sad when you see women do that to women of their own, yeah. their own gene, you know? And they come out and say, when I, I read Rihanna's story, I looked at it, my son came to show me and said, mommy, Rihanna just is pregnant and she's not married and Nigerians are celebrating her. A 15 year old boy can have that kind of mindset to say, oh, they're celebrating her. But when a, a woman of about 35 years gets pregnant, mommy, I hear, because it's happened to someone we know and every, every, everyone let loose, everywhere it was, you know, like, why are you this desperate at 35? You just have waited a little bit, blah, 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 blah. It is, and at the end of the day, they call it, our society is just very hypocritical, very mean. We refuse to accept the, the real, the, 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 they feel that it, it, it is bad, but they don't see when the man says, okay, I am a, a, a man that is sleeping with a woman without condom. And then the woman gets pregnant and the man wants to run away. There's nothing the woman can do. She will raise a child. Maybe she's been desperate for a child. And then she has the child. She wants to raise the child. I, I, there should be a kind of sanity in our society. Our society, our environment, especially in Nigeria, yeah, there's so much insanity, especially within the women. When then the church is not even helping matters. Somebody asked me, you've not been to church for two years. I said, for personal reasons. I don't have anything against anybody. Because I find out that the church is not even helping matters. They make it. I remember when I had my first child, I was asked not to come to church for three months, 15 years ago. Huh. I was asked not to near anywhere around the church. I was asked to stop walking in the church and all that. So when I saw this today, I was like, this is something I'm very interested in. Our society is mean. Our society is wicked. Mm. Shine the women. Mm. And then Rihanna is pregnant, everybody saying congratulations, congratulations, because she has the money. Even in our society, the women that have the money are being condemned. You find a woman of 40 years old pregnant and she's hiding her pregnancy because she doesn't want people to know she's pregnant, she doesn't have a husband. Mm. Mm. Even the ones that have husband, are the husband paying their bills? Are they paying school fees? <laughs> we see them around, they will come in the afternoon and do Baba Lagada and come and pick children in school. When it's time to pay school fees, they will run away. <laughs> mm. 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 So something you know, has to be done. You, you know, the history is there. That is, I think here, here in this part of the world, we don't like to own our truth. That's just we don't like it. We don't like it. That's the truth. I agree with you hundred percent. That the thing is, you know, I remember a few years back when my elder sister got pregnant. My parents we are we are asked to sit at the back of the church. Of the church, exactly. That's what they do. Catholic because does that. It's not as if they were even the one responsible for the pregnancy, or they said, "Oh, go and get pregnant." Though someone else sinned, and someone else is being punished. They're suffering for it. Religion, religion is not something that um, you you. They they've lost it. They've lost it. Honestly speaking, in Nigeria now, currently, religion. I can't even. I can't. There is no single church. There is no single church or any man that I will say, oh, I'm so proud of this person is doing because behind closed doors, there is a cockroach. You don't know what they are doing. That, that we are not even ready to start talking about. Like, I see them every day and people celebrate them. Papa, this, this, mommy, this, that, okay. that. It's, it's um, not um, um, can, I, can I say something? Okay, yeah. You. And I'll close up. Um, about this um, marriage of a teen, married, um, giving birth out of wedlock or when you get married. For me personally, uh, people discriminate me when I usually tell them, for me, I don't believe when you are married, that will make your marriage work or make your marriage last forever. For me, okay? There are so many people who can get married today and tomorrow... They are not longer. They are no more um, together anymore. And you can see people in a relationship, ten years, fifteen years, having kids together, and they are still together. I don't know if you mm -hmm. can get my point. So, is yeah. what matter is your happiness? Are you happy? Is the man doing the right thing? Are you exactly. guys? Um, do you guys have understanding? Because I've seen so many marriages today. One week later. They're separated, but you will see that one that have they have kids together. They haven't do um, the right thing, or maybe the bread prize, or going to the altar. But they are still what happy together, taking care of the kids together. So for me, I don't really think 
um, marriage or it's really a big deal for some people. Yes. But for me personally, I prefer when my kids are grown up, then if we are still together, then we can do the, the proper thing. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Yes. So it's still, it's still the same married now, married later, marriage now, marriage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, so for me, um, yeah, that's just... the topic is not going to end tonight. It's a very brilliant topic. I'm sure we're going to bring it up again. Uh, thank you to all my people on TikTok. I always thank them because um, I, I'm new to TikTok. Uh, this is literally my third time on TikTok Live. I have 36 people watching there. So, so really happy about that. And I'm proud. I'm, I thank you all to Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. You guys have been with me for the longest time. A lot of people are asking... Uh, Daddy Freeze, I want to take part in the Forex thing. Uh, I'm going to do this in all of two minutes. Uh, first of all, let me tell you this. Yeah, Just don't quote me later. If you invest in Forex, once you put your capital, the way to get your capital through your monthly installment. If you make 20% monthly in five months, you will make your 100% back. Do you understand? For those of you who are reaching out to me, Secondly, yeah, I have invested as of today. I, my target was $10,000. As of today, I've gotten to 9 k I've invested. I'm going to invest about 10 k and then start pulling my money out. It is not guaranteed for me. Neither is it guaranteed for you. Let me tell you what sometimes crashes these platforms. When everybody comes out and says, ah, it's a scam, it's a scam, and everybody tries to withdraw their money at the same time. You know what's going to happen. The platform is going to crash. So, and for those of you who are, because a lot of people are sending me questions, blah blah. I want to, I want to join. Have these at the back of your mind. Not, it's not my father's platform. If anything should happen, just as you are losing, on <laughs> invested more than you have. I'm not sure. Invested as high as ten thousand dollars. That's what I'm just telling you. For those of you who are still interested. To understand the risk but like me are willing to take the risks minimum investment is two hundred dollars i have 50k is not your you cannot enter 50k is not enough minimum is two hundred dollars and let me tell you it's good to start with the minimum so that you test the waters and see if it's profitable but at the end of the day if you invest two hundred dollars you will not be able to make your money back until 10 months because hundred dollars goes for the robot Hundred dollars is your investment, and you're making twenty percent of hundred dollars. That's twenty dollars. So for you to make your two hundred dollars back, you need ten months at twenty dollars. Do you? It will not turn war tomorrow, and you, you are going to go and start calling Daddy Freeze out. I'm just warning you. I, I'm putting this disclaimer as often as possible. There's so many people who are saying, even right here, instead of us to face the topic, Daddy Freeze, I want to trade forex. Daddy Freeze, out. even I was checking my um, DMs, Daddy Freeze. Forex, listen, I, I invest in it. But I want you to know that Bitcoin, Forex, uh, currency pairs, NFTs, they are all risky. I cannot come and die or die. <laughs> because if the money, if the thing, Baka, I'm going to die my own die because my own money don't lose. So I cannot be crying over lost <laughs> and be crying over your own money that is lost. Any investment you make, you make it at your own risk. I'm not making my investment at your risk. I'm making it at my risk. You are making your own, not at my risk, at your own risk. So for those of you who are interested, the number is 080-231-79239. Just remember that in crypto, the first word is cry, C-R-Y. So cry to, to cry inside crypto, they're very easy. I know somebody who borrowed money from a friend because he watched someone on the internet saying Ethereum is the best uh, crypto to buy. I went to buy five million naira worth of Ethereum at four thousand something dollars for one. Today Ethereum is two thousand two hundred dollars. He has lost half of the money, and he told the guy he will repay him back in February. We are in February now. Five million on two point two million or two point five million. Baba mm. dodge phone call up and down. Me, I don't want to dodge your call. So I could tell you down from now. 
any investment is a potential gold mine and a potential money trap. Sometimes the situation is out of my control or yours. But so far, so good. We've been doing well and we've been making um, 20% monthly, which is good. So if you're interested, WhatsApp only your name at Daddy Freeze to 080-231-79239. Someone said, since it's risky, why put money? <laughs> Any woman... Do you know that? Do you know what kills women the most in the life? Do you know what kills women the most? Childbirth. Why do you have it? That's a risk. Very scarce. That's true. <laughs> you know, but no, is the most very have to <laughs> so many complications can happen. So many women die at childbirth. Yet it was that's true. Sir. Video my mm -hmm. huh? you know one born, you won't get picking for your life. I Go. want to have I want to even this year itself is one of my no. <laughs> having a child. Huh? Do you realize you can die having a child? Of course. If you're ready, if you're ready to, if you're ready to think something positive, then you should think of the negative aspect of it. Thank you very much. Yes. So please, anybody that says since is risky, why do you do it? The equivalent of since the the one thing that can kill a woman easily. Is yeah, that's true. Some people say, yeah. Yeah. We heard the voice of the child and we heard the voice of the mother because it is not sure. Once the woman enters labor, she feel go mm -hmm. and the picking go go. She feel stay and the picking go go. She feel go and the picking go stay. It's not guaranteed. And when a man gets his wife pregnant, he stands the chance of losing both her and the child. There were so many... Do you know how many women I know that died at that, that childbirth? There was one girl that was dating then, very beautiful woman. Now, so, one day, you can't tell me, say, she don't, don't marry. Ah, are they, why she go marry? Come on, now, so she gets <laughs> die inside childbirth. Mm. I was now angry with the husband that when she was alive and when she was not married, she did not die. Now that she has married, give God carry belly, she's now dead. I'm she died about 15 years ago or 12 years mm. ago. You know? Or if not older, I'm missing missing up the times. <laughs> we everything everything in life generally is missed. Even in the scripture that you read. When he that man said he wants to okay. follow, she nearly died. It was the grace of luck. It was the grace of God. Sorry, that the two of them were alive. So, if you're saying if you are, I am investing because I am making money. I stand the chance of losing. Mm -hmm. But if I can see this thing through to a conclusion, then at the end of the day, the risk is minimal. But life itself is risky. Anytime you buy a car. Sure. I, buy, I always share yeah. from the U.S. That one month or three weeks I spend in the air, you will not be able to sleep. Anything can happen. So, yeah, just like me. When I gave birth to my first daughter, uh, I was in coma for like two weeks. Uh, I, I don't even know that I will be here today. So it's just, everything is risk, you know. But still yet. Because I still had another child. I still get another one. <laughs> <laughs> so after that one, you still born. I still have another one. So now there are even there are three. So after that risk, I still go two times again. So everything in this life is risk. You just have to, you know. Okay. So that is, um. Yeah. About forex. I said I was going to address this. Uh, please don't call the number. Don't text and WhatsApp only. You'll be answered and transferred to a whatsapp group and everything will be sorted out for you and the things will be explained to you better the number again 080-231-7939 okay. 
0839. Did you get it? Okay, send your name and daddy freeze by WhatsApp only and you, uh, you'll be sorted out. For the rest of us, thank you all so much for joining me live. Um, I had Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. Point on TikTok, 232 on Facebook and 111 on YouTube. Thank you guys all for coming out. It was really... Thank you for having us. Bookies, please. Bye. Bye. Thank you for the grilled fish. It was lovely. Take care, guys. <laughs> Bye. 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 Oh, you said I should say the number again. Okay. 080-231-79. WhatsApp only. Not respond to text messages. WhatsApp only. Send your name and daddy free to 80 231 79 Vito, I like your hair, though. I've not. Have I told you that? <laughs>